Hey guys, this is my video talking about the top five worst episodes of Supernatural Season 8. Now, this is obviously my opinion. These are what I think to be the worst. You may have different opinions. That's fine. That's absolutely great. I do want you guys to give me your top five worst in the comments below. But, and I might sound a little bit odd here, but despite the negativity of this idea, let's keep it to constructive. I like when you break down why something isn't as good as it could have been. Like the what ifs, the what ifs are always something that I like, especially because it brings out a lot more of the fandom and a lot more creativity. Regardless of that, these are what I thought were the top five worst episodes of season eight. Now this takes into account a lot of the mid for this season. A majority of the ones that are, I think are the worst were the filler episodes, but I'm gonna be starting off real hot <laughs> with number five as time goes by. Now, a lot of you may be wondering, why am I saying this is one of the worst ones? Well, considering the pedestal this one has in the legacy of the show, what this show would introduce being the Men of Letters and all of what would come from it, the bunker, all of the knowledge that came from it, all of the eventual storylines, the villains of season 12, this is a pretty important episode. Yet it sucks because the guy who plays their grandfather is a terrible fucking actor. What's it to you? Everything. He is one of the main reasons why this episode is, is as bad as it is. Because he's dreadful. He is a fucking chunk of wood. This man is one of the worst main episode characters this show has ever had. And it is purely because this guy cannot act out of a cardboard box. What's going on here? I don't know if maybe he was given the direction to act like this, or he thought this was a good idea. Please, I can assure you there's no need for violence. But the man is just cardboard. So it's here of a dragon and a pinch of the sands of time, but don't bother wrapping it up. I'll be using it right away. The guy can't even fucking emote when he gets stabbed in the goddamn stomach with a full fucking fist hand. He just stands there until someone tells him to die. He does have a great moment, don't get me wrong, him shooting Abaddon in the chin was pretty cool, but everything else about this episode is dragged down due to this man's clum clumsiness. But I did like Abaddon in this episode, don't get me wrong on that, but yeah, the grandpa is by far one of the worst characters. Not only in terms of how he's acted, but at one point just his whole gist about, oh, I gotta go back in time because I can save my son. To be constructive, he could have been a lot more well, better acted, for one. He, they could have had someone who knows how to inflect and knows how to actually have chemistry with the leads. But they also just kind of didn't really give this guy much of a reflection until maybe kind of like the very end. It was more so the scenes themselves at the very end with the funeral that gave the levity that he could have done, the emotion that he could have delivered. It's just a very wasted character. On to number four, another story related episode. This is A Little Slice of Kevin. Now, just on chance, can you tell me what this episode's about? I actually have had to rewatch my review of this episode three times to remind myself why I didn't like it, but it is the one where Kevin is kidnapped by Crowley, he gets his fingers chopped off, and his mom is a fucking idiot. The whole bit at the beginning of the episode with his mom working with a witch is just so fucking stupid because everyone, not just the audience, but literally the cosmos, could see where that was going. And when it turns into a betrayal, like, oh no, who could have saw that coming? Oh no. I like Crowley's evilness in this episode. Thought that was really good. And Castiel does come back. But they also insert unnecessary drama of like, for some reason, Dean can remember every single bit of purgatory, but he can't remember that Castiel whacked his hand away and said, nah, I belong here. There could have been some explanation maybe about having Benny in his arm and going through the tunnel could have cost something like literally a single fucking line of dialogue, maybe. I don't know. But the fact that Dean has had this guilt and it's been for nothing and is there for drama's sake. Just doesn't make any sense. The beginning of this episode is really poor. The whole thing with uh, Kevin Tran's mom is so poorly executed and so poorly written. It creates a sense of terror and whatnot that doesn't need to be there. So that is why it is number four on the list. Number three on the list is a giant waste of potential, and that is Remember the Titans. This was a cool idea in concept. We have Prometheus. 
the literal dude who sacrificed himself so that humanity could have fire and so he dies every day in all manner of ways and then he comes back every morning to then die again that's a really cool idea so why is it so boring i was amazed at how just blah this episode is it doesn't have nowhere near as much development as it should everyone's kind of wooden in it the only guy who is actually doing any kind of emotion is the dude who plays zeus at the end that's a dead guy dead my ass that's a zombie boys for the literal god of gods of greek mythology he dies like a bitch I was so disappointed that he died so quickly. This is an idea that could have been drawn out. This is an idea that could have maybe been over more episodes. Or at the very least, the pacing could have been much fucking better. For 40 minutes, you really feel 40 minutes. It is so slow. It's so awkward. It's so dull. It just doesn't have anything to it that would warrant what it should have been. It is a disappointing episode for sure. But it's not the most disappointing one. Number two. Freaks and Geeks, why the fuck is this episode here? Not only are we bringing back this character from the previous season that no one really remembers and no one really likes, they would replace her with Castiel's human vessel's character, his, his daughter, later on, and done better. So I never understood this character. The whole concept of this guy taking in these kids to turn to teach them how to hunt but also how to live their own life that's a cool idea and concept if it wasn't so fucking obvious that he was obviously behind everything and the dialogue between some of the kids i understand that teens are not sometimes some of the best actors and you're not looking for fucking oscar worthy acting in supernatural but it's just so bluff there's some dialogue that's really cringy what aiden no i mean He's like my brother. It's nothing like that. The whole twist at the very end with the guy and this vampire is working with so poorly put together. If I am correct, this was also a Eugene Ross, uh, a Eugene Lemming episode, which makes sense because they've just never shown any real show, actual talent in terms of putting into a story. How the episode comes to an end with them taking over the house is just so preposterous. And at the same time, just what Dean and Sam like try to have this conversation at the very end about like, well, why are we doing what we're doing? Like, it's very, very much trying to bring back to the main story of the season, as well as just elements from the season one and two. But it does it so poorly. Between the terrible acting, the terrible writing, the really bad and stupidly obvious twist, Freaks and Geeks more than proves why this character, this girl Hunter, never came back. And now for number one, most of you probably knew what this one was going to be, and I always feel that it gets a lot of hate for it, but truly speaking, it deserves to be the worst because it kind of is, is Bitten. Not only is it following in the trope of found footage movies, which yes, they were very, very popular at the time, yes, most of them do indeed suck ass, and this one is no exception. I like the idea of seeing Dean and Sam from afar, but there's just some times where it was just so laughably done, like when... Sam and Dean pull up to the crime scene and they pull up literally within what five feet of the fucking body I thought that was absurd along with that the very bad acting by the main guy in this episode maybe like working for HBO or or like Michael Moore would be cool obviously they were trying to really emulate that chronicle feel and i do actually like how the episode ends that's something i will say that's the only good part about this episode is what happens with her a little bit hypocritical perhaps of how the show has been done but that that was it you get through 40 minutes of shit for one kind of really cool shot at the very end the acting's bad the story is uh, I would have really liked to see this as a traditional episode, perhaps, because I really liked the story with the Dean and, or sorry, the teacher and him trying to pin it on the other kid. That would have been cool if it was told in a more regular medium for the show, but it's just done so poorly through this because the main part of what you're watching is these guys. If you want a very good version of a story similar to this, watch afflicted that's a found footage movie unfortunately these guys have never made another movie since but two canadian dudes made a really good movie about a guy turning into a vampire and his buddy documenting it and it's scary it's funny it's fun and it's 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 good everything that bitten is not 
And that is why it is my number one worst episode of Supernatural Season 8. But anyways, guys, those are my thoughts. Very curious to see what you guys think are the top five worst. And then, of course, the top five best of Supernatural will be coming out next week. And yeah, just like when we get there, post your top five in that one. Let, let's keep this one to what this is. Like we're not doing anticipation because I won't be reading those. And then that's it. We'll be done the traditional whole season run. And I'm knocking the wood here for my own sake. Hopefully we will have done the entire season from beginning to end and season review, best and worst, all in one continuous schedule. No breaks all Thursdays. So let's keep to it. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.